everybody. Nick here with Nick's Knife Works, bringing to you a new video series called Meet the Maker, where I am happy to introduce to you myself. I'm gonna ask a few questions that I did not write. My lovely wife wrote these questions. I'm gonna ask myself these questions so that it gives you the opportunity to get to know me a little bit better. Yeah, let's do this. Question number one. Yeah, how did you get started making knives? Yeah, so I got started when my wife gifted me for Valentine's Day about three and a half years ago. She bought me this thing called a man crate and uh, it was a DIY knife making kit from man crates. And there was very little involved as far as actual making of a knife because it was just basically gluing on two pieces of wood and shaping a handle. And that was it. That was all there was to it. But it was just enough to spark this fire inside of me that just went crazy. No way. It snowballed very quickly from that moment into so much more. And I don't think my wife had any idea what she started when she gave me that gift. Who would have thought that? But it's been an incredible journey and she definitely doesn't regret it at all. Huh. Um, so there's that. And so yeah, my wife gifted me a knife making kit and that's how I got my start. Very good. Question number two, how did you decide on the name of your knife. I don't name them all, but the, the models that I do want to repeat and make more of them that are popular requests, um, I name them all based on predators. And that was inspired by my favorite boyer, um, South Cox with stalker stick bows in Colorado. Uh, I'm a traditional archer. I love to shoot longbows and recurves. And he has uh, all of his bows named after predators, which fits archery because you're hunting and things and anyway i like that it fits me and my lifestyle and so naming all of my knives after predators is how i've chosen to name them nice there's a lot of predators out there so there's still a lot more knives um, to go i can dig it pretty cool pretty cool okay question number three who all is involved with Nick's Knife Works. So with, with Nick's Knife Works, I've got my marketing guy, my networking guy, um, my social media manager, uh, production manager, quality control, um, shipping and receiving, uh, material acquisition, wear and tear on equipment, maintenance, upkeep, groundskeeping, all sorts of different people involved with Nick's Knife Works. They're all named Nick, they're all me. I'm the, I'm, I'm the one who does all that. Um, plus, maintain uh, my day job, full-time business there, full-time business here, family responsibilities, all those things, uh, all at the same time. So my life's insane and it's wonderful. Really? Is that so? Okay, question number four. What is your favorite part about the knife making process? My favorite part has become the leather work, um, which is unusual because when I started out, sheaths were a pain. They were a thorn in my side and more of an afterthought. But as I've continued to develop my skill set, I so much look forward to doing the sheaths. It's become my favorite part of the entire process. I love making knives, don't get me wrong. I love it, but when I get to the sheaths, there's just something about working with leather that I very much enjoy. And so my favorite part is the leather work. Yeah, I hear you. Question number five. What advice would you give other makers out there? I would tell other makers out there to make sure and slow down and not be in a hurry to hit the finish line. It can be so easy 
to want to hit the finish line so that you can move on to the next project, the next knife. You're so excited to start that next one and try something new or just keep moving um, and keep the pace when I have to I have to intentionally slow down and focus on the task at hand and execute to my standards before um, I can move on. Early on, I, I wasn't good about doing that. I would rush through various steps just to be able to move on to the next one. And if I could give you all any advice or if I could rewind time and give myself advice when I was starting out, it would be to slow down and focus on quality over quantity in the, uh, especially starting out, get the details right get the fin and fit and finish as good as you possibly can and don't rush it. Mm. Good advice. Question number six. What are you looking forward to the most in this next year? Yeah, I am so excited for Blade Show 2024, Blade Show Atlanta in early June. When I went this last year, I wasn't at, I wasn't there as a vendor. I was just there to experience the show. And it was incredible. And I'm so glad that I did that for my first trip. But this this coming year, Blade Show 2024, I will be there as a vendor and I will have a table. And I am just very, very excited to do that. It's gonna take a lot of preparation, a lot of discipline and a lot of work to be able to do that and to do it well. But I am so excited to go back to Atlanta in 2024 and be a part of Blade Show as a vendor. Right on. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. Well, thank you so much, Nick, for joining us. It was very wonderful to have you on the show. Thanks. I look forward to doing episode two. Speaking of episode two, if you have any questions that you would like to ask Nick next time we have him on the show, be sure and mention those questions in the comments of this video and they might get answered next time we have Nick join us. Hey, this has been great. I've loved it. Uh, we should definitely do this again. I'd be on board for that. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Appreciate everything you do for us. We'll see you next time.